Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is two Earths that are orbiting around one another that are going to start falling apart any second now. They're falling apart because of the concept known as the Roche Limit, which I've briefly mentioned in one of the previous videos and explained in more detail in another video. But in this video I wanted to actually see if we can use this concept to combine all of the planets in our solar system into one mega planet, just the same way that you see happening right now. Can we do it? Well, let's find out. Welcome to What The Math. And so the reason the Earth number one made the Earth number two kind of fall apart and absorb some, some of its mass is because of this Roche limit um, principle that actually can be calculated quite easily using a very simple formula um, that you do see on the screen right now. Basically the distance where this sort of breakup starts occurring uh, can be found by multiplying 1.26 by the radius of the main body or the bigger body or the more, more massive body and then multiplying that by the uh, ratio of two densities between the main body and the smaller body and then taking a cubic root of that. Uh, in this particular game though, in Universe Sandbox, uh, the Roche limit is actually already here. It, uh, the Roche lobe radius actually is already located and pre-calculated for you, although it's not always super accurate. Now, we're not going to be doing a lot of math in this video, we're just going to play around and create a mega planet. How? Well, let's do it this, the following way. Mercury versus Venus. Which of these do you think will absorb the other? I'm going to place both of them in an orbit around one another. We know that Mercury is a lot more dense than Venus, or I guess not a lot, but slightly more dense than Venus. And we know that Venus is a lot more massive than Mercury. So which of these will eventually start absorbing the other? Well, maybe not from this distance. Maybe we need to place them a little bit closer to each other. So let's just place them right here. And go. And look at that. Right away, Venus is already on fire. But who is going to fall apart? Who is actually going to start absorbing the other? Now, when I did this previously with black holes around our planet Earth, black holes always win. Even if they're less massive than, than the Earth, they always start absorbing a lot more materials from our planet. I need to place them a little bit closer until they start falling apart. And there we go. Mercury loses. Venus wins. Due to the uh, tremendous mass com in comparison to Mercury, um, and here we're talking about 4.5 moons for Mercury and like 66 moons of mass for Venus. In other words, it's um, something like 15 times more massive. Uh, Venus wins without any problems. It wins almost right away. Now, Mars is somewhere in between... Uh, these two. Actually, it's a lot closer to Mercury. It's a lot less massive than Venus. So it's very likely that it's not going to win this battle, but let's see. Let's place it right there. It absorbs some of the Mercury. It made Venus even hotter than before, but so far nothing is falling apart. Nothing is really happening. All right, so maybe just maybe I need to change this a little bit by doing the following, by actually going into the settings and decreasing the velocity just so that Mars starts approaching Venus a little bit closer. And right around here, we're going to decrease its velocity again. And look at that. That completely destroyed Mars. So now Venus has both Mars and Mercury in it. As a matter of fact, it's actually getting closer and closer to the mass of Earth. It's about 90% mass of Earth right now. Now, here comes the big battle. Earth versus Venus. Can you imagine or can you predict what's going to happen? Well, chances are our planet is going to win, but you never know. Our planet is actually the most dense of all planets in our solar system. It's also the most massive of all of the terrestrial planets. So there's a very big chance that if I place Earth right here, it's going to absorb Venus, but you never know. Let's find out what happens. And here comes the Roche limit, battle of the uh, giant terrestrial planets. And so far, Earth has eaten up the rest of Mars and Mercury, and it even absorbed that last rock just now, but um, no breakups just yet. Nothing is breaking. 
Now you may actually wonder why are they glowing? Why do they get so hot? And this is actually because of the uh, tremendous amount of friction that's created by the interaction of the tidal forces. So as these two planets orbit around one another, the actual interaction of tidal forces between them causes them to produce huge, huge amounts of friction on the inside. Basically, it's like rubbing your hands really, really, really fast. But in this case, billions and billions of hands together. And uh, this creates this unusual um, heating effect. Now, in real life, it might not actually be that much, but in this game, it is. All right, so let's go in here and reduce the velocity, making them orbit around each other a little bit closer. And oh no, look at that. Oh wait, that's Venus. Ha, ah, I thought it was Earth. Yes, Earth wins. Perfect, I think, right? Yeah, it definitely um, started to break down Venus and it looks like it's going to start absorbing a lot of this material pretty much right away. And look at that, it just ate the whole Venus. All right, so Earth right now is about 1.85 masses of Earth. Not exactly perfect because if you were to combine all terrestrial planets together, it would probably be a little bit more massive, massive than that, but yeah, that's okay for now. Let's go with the gas giants. Now, the difference between terrestrial planets and the gas giants or ice giants is that um, these here have a much, much higher density. Their density is very, very high. The ice giants like Uranus and Neptune or uh, the gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn have very low density. It's closer to about one. It's about five times less dense. Now, if you remember the Roche limit formula, density does play a big role. So, do you think that if I were to place the next biggest object here, Uranus, Earth would actually win? Would it actually um, make Uranus lose its mass? Let's find out. I'm going to place it right here. And we're going to discover what happens. So far, nothing. But... As you can see, Earth is orbiting around Uranus, not the other way around, so the primary body here is this. So you need to use this as a main calculation for the Roche limit. The thing is, in terms of mass differences, if the mass difference is very, very high, like in this case it's 14.5 Earths and this is about 1.9 Earths, in this case, um, this object has to be much, much, much higher in density. A lot higher in density than this object current difference between them so uh the density here as you can see is 1.27 the density here is about 5.9 it's not as big as the difference in mass this suggests that if i place earth closer and oh that's not exactly what i wanted that is not exactly what i wanted let's try this again actually let's pl place another earth here if i place earth closer you'll see that even if the mass of this Earth is like two masses of Earth and the density here is close to about six, even in this case, it's very, very likely that Earth will actually um, break, break apart. It's not, uh, not Uranus, but actually Earth. And we'll see this happening any second now. And this is simply because the difference in mass between these two objects is much higher than the difference in density. And right around there, you can kind of see, I had to place them a little bit closer to each other for this to actually start happening. And, uh, hmm, interesting. So, it looks like Earth is actually surviving this encounter. Very, very unusual. But anyways, yeah, it did get absorbed by Uranus after all. All right, so, Uranus versus Neptune. Uh, this now has close to about 19 Earths. Whereas Neptune only has about 17 Earths, so it's very, very likely that the um, Uranus is probably going to win this. Yes, and it is winning because it absorbs so many other planets, um, it's going to also absorb Neptune. Even though Neptune is technically a little bit more massive and also has a slightly higher density. But in this particular simulation, because we slowed other terrestrial planets, it acquired a little bit more density and it also acquired a little bit more mass. Nevertheless, though, as soon as I place Saturn, which is the next in size and in the next in mass, things will go really bad for both the leftover Neptune and, of course, for Uranus here. And just watch. This is the Roche limit 
at its best. So, first of all, yes, Saturn will get a little bit warmed up. But as things start spinning around each, uh, each other here, you'll notice that both of these gas giants will start interacting with one another with, I believe, Uranus slowly losing its mass here. So, something is definitely losing mass. And, oh, oh, look at that. It's actually... It's actually Saturn. It's actually eating up some of the Saturn's mass. And, well, can you guess why? Interestingly, okay, well, that happened. Interestingly, this was happening because of one simple reason. I'm going to actually try to recreate this again. This was happening because Saturn actually has the lowest density in our solar system. Okay, well, this time it seems to have one. But yeah, it has the lowest density in our solar system. And because of that, when uh, that previous Uranus was approaching Saturn, it was kind of shaving off parts of Saturn due to the uh, Roche limit and also due to the tidal force interactions. But this time Saturn won and ended up swallowing um, that Uranus with Neptune and everything else in it. Alright, so we have one single planet left, the mighty Jupiter. Now here there is no competition. This is going to be a battle that is there is no way that uh, Saturn can win. You can see almost right away Jupiter starts absorbing parts of Saturn and look at that, it shrinks and disappears in, in, in its entirety. That is how powerful and how massive Jupiter actually is. Now obviously if I were to place uh, some of the terrestrial planets around Jupiter, they might actually be able to survive um, and not fall apart at this particular location because their density is higher. So. Even though Saturn did deconstruct and did uh, disappear, Mercury, for example, seems to be just fine. So if I were to zoom into Mercury here, you'll notice that it orbits even closer and is absolutely fine. As is our planet Earth, which is just hot, but otherwise also fine as well. Uh, I think Venus and Mars collided with one another, that's why we have so many fragments. But they, will, they would actually also be able to survive in this particular location and not fall apart. Because their density is much, much higher than the density of Saturn that I'm going to place somewhere in here. Or actually, let's place uh, let's play Uranus because it's a little bit smaller, but it is a lot less dense than these objects. So it's very likely that it might end up falling apart as well. And so here's Uranus and here's Neptune. And look at that, Neptune disappears once again, but if I were to place Earth here, right around here, it would be just fine. And so that's the idea of Roche limit in a nutshell, a visual representation of how all of this works and how these objects um, interact with one another, but also how various binary systems interact with one another and form different unusual um, planetary and also star systems. And anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it and enjoyed the collisions and various interactions between these planets. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe, potentially share this video with someone who likes watching and learning through video games and uh, someone who enjoys space, sciences and math videos as well. Come back here tomorrow to learn something else, something interesting, something you may have not known. And anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.